Um, I'm a woman, if you can't tell. I'm also an entrepreneur, which you might not have been able to tell. Um, I'm 25 years old, and about three years ago, I moved back to North Bay. I wanted to start my business here, so I moved back in with my parents, and I dumped out all of their Lego, and I wanted a physical model of exactly what I wanted my business to be. So, as you can see, I, I wanted all of these services. I, I designed everything from the culture to the atmosphere to the products to the services, and then about a week later, this is exactly what I walked away with. This was my business. So I had four products, really like basic products, and a little pamphlet that said, my name's Brandon, I'm a nutritionist. So it's important to note that um, a few months before, I had just graduated from the Canadian School of Natural Nutrition. So I went to school in Ottawa, you got my BA, and then I applied um, to get into CSNN. So I was ready, I graduated, wrote my boards, um, and then about a few months after that original table that you saw, this is what my table evolved into. So as you can see on the one side, I had my nutrition services that I had developed, and on the other side, I had all of my different products, and as you can see, more than four. Um, but I decided it wasn't enough for me. I really wanted to get more involved in the community and really know um, what was kind of missing in the community. And so I started volunteering and I joined a Paro Circle, which is essentially a group of women who are committed to helping you grow your business. And the more I started working with women entrepreneurs, the more um, my business actually expanded. So my product was in stores owned by women. I'm a yoga instructor, so I started teaching for yoga studios owned by women. Um, and with the help of women, I also started um, getting more involved. I started doing workshops in high schools and doing workshops um, around town. Um, but something didn't really feel right to me. And something about the business culture specifically among women in business, I couldn't put my finger on it, but I wasn't, I just, it wasn't me. And so I decided to start my own culture. And so uh, last summer, I created the Artisan's Way, which is a monthly vendor market. And essentially the point of the Artisan's Way was just to create a very neutral ground for entrepreneurs of all kinds, men and women, to create, to, to offer their product without having to jump through hoops or pay a crazy price for a table or know someone who knows someone. This was my last event last October. I did a night market. Um, and essentially what I found out by the end of my market season was that women, specifically my women vendors, were coming to me with concerns that I thought I had eradicated by setting this new culture. So the business culture was kind of seeping in. So a little bit of backstory, um, when I grew up in, in you know, elementary school, I always thought men and women were equal in the workplace. I was never told, hey, you're gonna have it harder because you're a woman. Something um, equally important to note, this is my grandmother, um, super sassy, as you can tell. I like to call her the OG independent woman. Um, <laughs> She, she was a big um, influential figure in my life and she, always, she never told me you're strong because you're a woman. She always told me you're strong. This is my Aunt Rita. Um, she's also OG independent woman number two. Um, she never got married in a time where it was weird not to get married. She started working. She was in the workforce when there weren't a lot of women working in her industry. And these are my parents. Um, you might know that guy. Um, they were, they're entrepreneurs and they started their own business when I was really young. They were both, they both worked equally as hard um, and they always told me you can do whatever you want. And so kind of going into the workforce, going into business culture with my upbringing, I came into it with a really kind of neutral understanding of I wasn't super defensive. Um, when I got into my business started growing, social media started growing, I started noticing as I followed more women entrepreneurs that there were two types of women being depicted in the media that I actually was experiencing. I like to call this the overcompensator, this entrepreneur. So as you can see, very hard, um, almost masculine. At the same time, the hashtag boss bitch started coming all over my newsfeed. The second type of entrepreneur, um, I like to call the passive aggressive entrepreneur. So the kind of person who, you know, when you see on Facebook, they post this picture and you're, it doesn't really make sense to you, but you're like, whoever she's talking about, they are feeling it right now. <laughs> and every time I kind of approached people with these issues where I was like, I just, I'm not vibing with this business culture and I don't know why people are treating each other this way. I was always approached with like, oh, you're being a little negative here, positive vibes only. Like, I think you just need to turn your perspective around. And I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just trying to be the most authentic version of myself and call people out when I feel like they're not being authentic. 
I'm genuinely just trying to, I think that the answer, whether you're a man or you're a woman in the business culture, the way to kind of shift it is just to be honest and open and kind of willing to, <laughs> willing to talk. And my hope is that in the future, this presentation won't necessarily be a thing. People won't understand why I'm talking about women versus men in, in business. And my hope is that people stop talking like I'm a boss bitch and just start talking like I'm a boss. Yeah.